Recently, Supreme Master Ching Hai graciously allowed our association members to gather for an international seminar. It was a joyous occasion as Master and disciples reunited to meditate and pray for peace. During this precious time, Supreme Master Ching Hai also spoke of the teachings of past masters and answered the spiritual questions of our association members. The following is a discussion with Supreme Master Ching Hai with the theme Inner Beauty and Innate Intelligence, which took place on August 20th and 21st, 2008, during the International Seminar. How are you guys? Everything good? I love you very much and I'm very happy that uh, even though I haven't been in Europe all this time. I was always in Taiwan or America. Even then, you are still practicing, and that's very good. That means you are sincere, you're very sincere. You love me because of my teaching. My teaching appeals to you. So if my teaching appeals to you, that means at least you're up to it. Good level, that's what it means. Anyway, I'm very touched with your devotion and diligence. So you've been growing all by yourself. There are a couple of things that I <laughs> want to remind you. Everywhere you go, I want you to represent me. Like, you wouldn't do what I wouldn't do. And you treat everyone as you would like to be treated. I mean, you wouldn't kill people, that I know. You're very good. <laughs> You're vegetarian, that I know. You keep the five precepts, I know that, and that's very good. And you meditate, and it's very good. But there are some common sense we have to consider. Be a good man or person, even in spiritual practice, because that's the way we should be, not because Master say that. You, my representative, you do what you think Master would do in a proper way, even here or anywhere. Whatever you do bad, you cannot get anything good out of it. Can you? Huh? You won't get nothing being selfish. We only get blessing when we are selfless and noble and consider others before ourselves. Treat everyone similarly, always in a good manner, consideration, love, respect, you like to be a good man, a noble, elegant, pretty? Beauty doesn't always come from the face or the body. Beauty from inside, there are two kinds of beauty. The beauty from inside is always everlasting and always endearing to everybody. So you see all the masters, especially in India or Taiwan, or Chinese, the old time, they have bear all over, they don't shave, they don't wash their hair long like a hippie, and their bear are up to their feet. And they're wearing not too much clothes, or don't wear at all, or wear very shabby clothes or anything. They don't look like the model that lives in Monaco or something like that, no. But people still flock to their feet and love them, adore them, and die for them even, if they have to. During Prophet Muhammad time, people had war with whoever in the authority or the religious establishment of that time, because some people were willing to die for the Prophet, and they do it in defense, not because they wanted war. Least of all, the Prophet had never told them to go on war with anybody. But sometimes they want to defend for their children, or their brothers and sisters, their family, when other people like religious zealous or authority figures go and harass them or try to kill them, then they try their best to defend. And in the defense, maybe both sides get hurt, or one side get hurt, or they will die. Not that the Prophet expects them to die for him, or not that he has ever ordered anybody to go out and fight in the war. This thing happened naturally. So what I mean is, we have to be beautiful inside out. I want you to be beautiful everywhere and anytime. So everywhere you go, people will have respect for you. And then whatever you say will have effect. People will listen. If you are acting like uh, anybody else, 
no matter what kind of good teaching you tell, I don't think people even want to listen. Correct? So, we eat two times a day, is it enough or too much or too little? We had soup today. You get soup today only? No, not only soup. I met a person who doesn't eat much. Sometimes she says she has to eat to sleep. And uh, sometimes it's boring in this world. If you don't sleep, you don't eat. What else to do? <laughs> That's the thing. We have enough food to eat, actually. You're not taking food away from anyone. It's just that some eat too much, and the meat consumption is the worst. Meat consumption is the one that takes away all things, water, cereals, and the vegetable protein, ninety percent of it. So it's taken away a lot of the world resource. Water, seventy percent of it. So even if we don't shower, we don't brush teeth, it's amount to nothing. When they don't stop eating meat, we're going to damage this planet. The resource will be running out. It's already running out. And also a lot of people stop piling their food also because they worry about the climate change. But before that, the food is already short. I am with uh, 62 million people are hungry worldwide this year alone because of meat diet, because all the food are fed to the animals, the resource and the land and everything. I can never talk enough about that. It is ridiculous that somebody eats so much and somebody eats little. It's not like if they eat meat and everything healthy and good and happy for them and they could be uh, enjoying forever. It's not. If they keep eating like that, they will also be gone. If the earth gone, finally no more resource, nothing else to eat them. <laughs> 